Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, and I know I made you a promise that I wasn't going to make any more videos on rust removal. And uh, the one I'm going to make today, it will be on rust removal with molasses, and I've never actually done that before, so that's new to me and maybe to some of you, but I think a lot of other people have videos on that. But this is really in preparation for an upcoming video, which has not been made yet, but I'm going to call it the Olympics of rust removal. And in that video, with some of these rusty wrenches here, I got a whole pile of junky wrenches, I will compare side by side rust removal with the electrolysis method, the vinegar method, evapor rust, which I've never used yet, this one that was donated to me that is called industrial rust eliminator, and grandma's molasses. So I'll do all of those in one video, but for today it's strictly molasses in January. So stand by for rust removal. And this will have to take place over several days. This is just the introductory part. I don't know how long it takes because I haven't used molasses, but it will be more than one day. In these videos I use uh, these shoe boxes. They're just the handiest thing and they're super cheap. Uh, and, and I can throw them away if they get too uh, dirty, but my wife always keeps a complete selection of these on hand because she's heavily involved with this uh, shoebox gift, and as many of you are familiar with it. I'm just going to put a little plug in here because it's before Christmas, but through the Samaritan's Purse, which is Franklin Graham, you can give these shoe boxes that are, uh, and you fill them with goodies and they're sent overseas to children that need it, and this is a very worthy charity where I believe everything goes to the children, not to some fat uh, guy that's sitting up in an office and, and you know, he's, get, he's taking it all in salary. So, all right, that's just a thought. But So I mooch these off my wife because she has so many, but I'll pay her back. They're about a dollar each. Okay, so what I'm going to do here with molasses is I'm going to take these two chisels and these uh, I rescued from a hammer and chisel mechanic. Do you have little beauties like this in your house? So those will be put in here and I have to mix up the molasses and this came from uh, um, Walmart and it was about it was under three dollars and that's about how many ounces in there I gotta look. And I've had this in what this is quite warm I've had it in hot water this is 12 ounces and I'm told from what I've heard that it ought to be about a 1 to 8 ratio mixed with water. We won't use that pure. Now you can also get this, I understand, from a feed store where they uh, prepare feed for cattle and it might be slightly different. And if you need a lot of it, that's where you would get it because it's too expensive to get this way. So I'm going to mix this with hot water in a empty jug and in 1 to 8 uh, ratio which is about 12 ounces to well let me figure it out again but I think I'm going to put about uh, 96 ounces of hot water in there. All right an 8 to 1 ratio is about 12 ounces to 96 ounces of water. Again this is 12 ounces this water is warm just you know in general to heat something up speeds up any reaction, but I can't keep this hot. You know, this flow is slower than molasses in January. I have to laugh when I look at this. There's uh, a picture of Grandma, but yet it's a 30-year-old woman with a white wig who they are pretending is real old. Well, you know, and sometimes you see grandmas now that are only 30 years old, for crying out loud. My grandmothers were in the 80s when I was a little kid, and they looked like they were in the 80s. So here it is. And I'm going to pour it in here and hope I don't make a mess. I don't know. Wow, does that have an odor? And I think somebody said it will stink as it starts to remove the rust, and if so, I'll have to move this out in the garage, so I don't want the house to smell. Alright, I'll put a little uh, hot water in here, and this is still a glass jar, by the way, so there must be some reason that they don't use plastic, and, and that I live in a glass-making town, a bottle-making town, it's good to 
feel something that's real glass. And then I'm going to shake the heck out of this and see how well it mixes. All right, there's the last of it. I'll shake that up good, but I'm going to do it over the sink in case this cap blows off because it's not a screw type cap. This is day one of this experiment. So here it is. It mixed up real nice. I, th I thought uh, it would be on the bottom. I, th I guess I won't have to use all of this. I'll just cover up the chisels. I don't think they float. And that took, let's see, about half of the jug full. I'll set that aside. Now I have many, many other videos on rust removal. So look up Tubalcane Electrolysis, Tubalcane Vinegar, a Google search or a YouTube search, and that should uh, uh, tell you or find them for you. Now I'm going to put the lid on this, I guess, in case it smells. And I'll be back in 24 hours with day two, and we'll just take a look at them and see if there's any action at all. Or, And I have a question for you. I've been working on removing rust from this uh, bayonet. Can anybody identify this? I think it's even from before the First World War, but I'm not sure. It does say USA on it. But I don't believe it's Civil War, but I suppose it could be. It says U.S. someplace down here. I forgot where. And I removed the rust up here, but it's already rusting again. I think I did that by vinegar. I forgot, I forgot now. That came from a garage sale. What war or what kind of gun does this fit? See you tomorrow. Good morning. This is day two of the molasses experiment, and my mother told me to always put newspaper down when I do something messy, so I have done as so. And uh, let's see what this looks like. Now, it doesn't look anything different uh, from yesterday. Quite a strong odor, but let me pull. Maybe they shouldn't be taken out, but let me uh, take one out. Put it in uh, clean water here, and I'm just going to real quickly run my fingernail brush over that and uh, see if anything has happened at all in this first day. Very little is coming off. You see a little brown stuff coming into the clear water. But I would say in the first day there's virtually no change. little disappointing to me because I want the reaction to be faster than that, the, like the other methods are. So back in the uh, molasses it goes and uh, I'll see you on day three. I'm back and this is day three of the molasses experiment and I was totally dissatisfied with uh, yesterday's results because nothing happened. So let me pull one of those chisels out. Rinse it here a little bit. Because you know if this was electrolysis or one of my other methods it would be done by now. Oh, okay, we're getting a little results here. I'm surprised that I don't see more in the water. More rust, more debris, but I, I see now that I'm starting to get down to some base metal. It, almost, it looks black here. I'm going to let this go another day or two and uh, we'll look at it again but it has cut through the rust right here on this one okay that's all I'm gonna do today other than to announce to you that I just bought 
five or ten pounds, I forgot which, of citric acid. And that's another suggestion that I got from viewers. So I plan on uh, doing another experiment like this. Because I have two more chisels yet besides what I put in the molasses here. And that does not smell all that bad either, like I thought it would throughout the whole room. But I got yet two more rusty chisel so I'm going to do citric acid in the next one but we'll have a few more days on molasses. I'm back again and this is day four and this is as far as I'm going to carry this little demonstration because it's already taken longer than what I would have thought. I want to be done in a day or two with any kind of rust removal. Remember it was an 8 to 1 ratio here with the molasses and then I just took the liberty of reading the ingredients on grandma's here and I think I should have used Brer Rabbit. I wonder if they still make Brer Rabbit. That's all my mother used. But on the uh, label here, the only ingredient is molasses. So there is no other, no other nonsense going on. But let's take this off and pull these uh, chisels out of here and see what we got. right into the water. Okay, I got a little steel brush here. I don't want to spend a lot of time with a brush because I could have taken it to the power brush and been done in minutes if I was going to do brushing. And there's still an awful lot of rust on there. Some is coming off and you see some discoloration in the water. And I'm not going to bother with the other chisel there because it's really going to be the same thing. And I don't, I'm not satisfied. I'm not happy with this. Although it is not rusty in color. Let me uh, wipe it with a towel, get it dry. I took a Stanley chisel and scraped a little bit and you can see a little bit came off, not much. Let me get rid of that harsh white towel and zoom in on this. And you can see there's just a lot of rust on there. And remember, this is what it started looking like, but I'm just not satisfied. That's four days of soaking. So I am declaring this experiment with molasses in an 8 to 1 ratio as a total and unadulterated failure. And uh, I had such uh, encouragement by people telling me how great that it worked. And I don't know what the problem is other than uh, my solution was too weak. But, all right. So I'm done with this experiment. It's a failure. So uh, be sure and watch the Olympics, which is coming on. And I'll do it again when I do all five of them in a row and I'm going to use a much uh, more concentrated solution. But why would I mess with this when I got other things that work much better? But I will have a follow-up video on this very shortly. And it will be on uh, citric acid. And that has given me great, or people that have told me about it, have given me great promise. I have that coming in the mail here directly. So I'll take these other two rusty chisels. There's one there. I had a total of these, of four. And we'll work those over with citric and compare them. But be sure and watch the Olympics coming up of five or six different methods. I talked about that at the beginning of this video. So. See you in the next video. This is Tubal Kane and I am sorely disappointed.